Edward Marshall Mooney, also known as the Whistling Man, is the posthumous, overarching antagonist of the indie horror game Killer Frequency. He was a serial killer in the small town of Gallows Creek that murdered at least a dozen people during his killing spree, causing havoc before his death and leaving a mark on the town that would later on cause a second killing spree. Not much is known about his personality, but it can be assumed that he was an extremely cruel and sadistic person, more than willing to kill at least a dozen people in Gallows Creek without any known motive. As Forrest Nash's producer Peggy points out, no reason for his actions were ever discovered, which made him a highly unstable and dangerous individual. There is no information about his life before becoming a serial killer, except that he lived in Gallows Creek. During the 50s, Mooney started to go around the small town killing whoever he wanted without any reason. He started wearing a mask and because of his signature whistling, he was later dubbed the Whistling Man. Wait, what? No, no way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? But that mask, how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The Whistling Man! During this time, he was able to kill several people before eventually being found by the police. During the chase that ensued, he was cornered at the top of Whistling Point where he jumped down. Despite the fact that his body was never found, he was assumed to be dead. While this was the end of his killing spree, his legacy would continue with the shadow of his actions that influenced the entire town. Gallows Creek Mayor Teddy Gallows Jr. and several of his friends would later on use the same clothing as him to scare some kids causing the death of one of them, George Barrow. The event would be the spark that caused George's girlfriend Marie Campbell to go on a killing spree along with her son Henry to avenge him by taking the appearance of the Whistling Men, continuing his legacy. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, the, the, the he? Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. Crazy wearing this. <sighs> there we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? Due to various notes, newspaper clippings, and other information throughout the radio station, we know that the current storyline takes place in 1987 while the death of George Barrow occurred in 1968, meaning that Henry, the second Whistling Man character, is around 18 to 19 years old. Now, we don't know what kind of environment Henry was raised in as a youth. We don't get a ton of clarity on what type of mother Marie Campbell was to her and George's son. But based on the ending conversation with Forrest and Peggy, we learn that Marie had some kind of fallout with her parents which caused the estranged relationship with her sister Peggy. Believing that she was left entirely alone with no one around who would buy into her knowledge that George's death was a cover-up by Teddy Gallows, his friends, the town sheriff, and even the coroner, Virginia. Based on the type of answers Forrest gives to Marie, I feel there are likely two ways that Henry was raised. If Forrest chooses the snarky responses, then Marie appears to be more sinister and even more twisted and bloodthirsty, and this would be the kind of mother who would raise her son Henry to become her murderous partner in crime training him to become the ultimate killer by teaching him only to hate and avenge. Whereas if Forrest chooses the more thoughtful responses, Marie comes off as more of a victim who feels that she has no choice but to take matters into her own hands and it's likely in this case, Henry would take it upon himself to be there for his mother by whatever means necessary. Together, the killer duo of Marie and Henry Campbell will always kill Clive the janitor as he is most likely the first person we play as in the start of the game the Sheriff of Gallows Creek, along with Jimmy, one of the party pranksters, regardless of the actions of protagonist radio host Forrest Nash. So, even if Forrest does save every one of his callers, there will always be at least three victims on the night of the spree. But in the ending where no one lives, that would mean the total kill count of Henry and Marie Campbell would reach the insanely high number of 26 in one night with 25 humans and one dog, that being the pet dog of Roller Ricky. 
As the credits roll, we learn that exactly like Edward Mooney and her late husband George, Marie would suffer the same fate as them on top of the whistling point where she would fall to her presumed death. We have the suspect cornered at the top of whistling point. Stop! Put your hands in the air! Get down on the ground! No, stop! Suspect has jumped! Officer Lugo, do you have a visual? Negative. No sign of the suspect anywhere. As for Henry, his fate is left undecided, and with the trophy for completing the game coming in the form of a question regarding the ending, I believe that Henry is still alive and is now formulating a plan for his ultimate revenge on Forrest Nash, the man who denied him and his parents justice in their eyes. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Millennial Media as I will be covering various games in the future of this channel. Goodbye.